first recording on the Deutsche Grammophon label, playing the Waltz Scherzo by Emmanuel Chabrier. Nada has recently released her second recording on the Deco label, not bad for a Canadian pianist still in her 20s. I'll give away five of those new Deca CDs at the end of the show. Hello again, I'm Eric Friesen. Welcome to this onstage edition from Glenn Gould Studio. Nada Cole was born in Toronto in 1974 and grew up in this city for the most part. Music lovers here have known about her for a long time. Since she was a kid, she's been winning music competitions in both piano and flute. At age 11, she entered the Royal Conservatory, studying piano, flute, and violin. At age 14, she began taking master classes with the legendary pianist Leon Fleischer. There were more studies at the conservatory, as well as in Montreal and at the Peabody in Baltimore. There were competition wins in Prague and at the Van Cliburn in Fort Worth, Texas. Now she's all grown up and a full-time career pianist. She's made those two CDs, and she collaborates regularly with violinist Guidon Kramer. We'll catch up on her life when I talk to her at intermission. What's also obvious the very first time you see Nada Cole in person is how beautiful she is. Reserved, poised, and very beautiful. For concerts, she almost always wears vintage dresses. In fact, she told me she's got a couple of closets full of over a hundred vintage dresses in her New York apartment. For tonight's concert, she's chosen one whose color could only be described as popsicle green. Now, tonight, Nada Cole plays music by Rachmaninoff, his Ten Preludes, Opus 23, Gabriel Faure's Ballade, and Chopin's Piano Sonata No. 3 in B minor. Here she comes, on stage at Glenn Gould Studio, wearing this long, popsicle green vintage gown and she'll open this Toronto recital with the prelude in C-sharp minor by Rachmaninoff and then immediately plunge into the ten preludes, opus 23.
The Ten Preludes, Opus 23 by Sergei Rachmaninoff. The set opened with Rachmaninoff's famous Prelude in C-sharp minor, Opus 3, number 2. The pianist, Nada Cole. And it's Nada Cole on stage here on CBC Radio 1 and Radio 2. Coming up on the second half, it's music by Faure and Chopin. But now a conversation I had with Nada Cole just after rehearsal. I've been doing something interesting, Nato. Uh, you know, here at the radio music department, the CBC, we used to be good at keeping files on musicians. <laughs> files that can have, you know, press clippings, uh -huh. uh, transcribed interviews, that kind of thing. And I was going through your file uh, before, before you came in today, and I have in this file here pictures of you when you were four playing the violin. You're kidding. You know, <laughs> seven playing the flute. Mm -hmm. Um, there are newspaper clippings that follow you, follow you through all your competition wins when right. you were a kid. Uh, and now you've here, you're here, you've released your second recording for the DECA label. It seems to me, as I look at this, it's you've gone a, from one achievement to another with very little standing in your way. And I wonder if you can tell me what got you from there to here. Just, I, I would say, working working hard no matter what and uh and luck and you know good circumstances along the way it's a bit of both isn't it mm -hmm, definitely what have been the biggest obstacles along the way for you in a sense i think you're right there there haven't been major obstacles to to overcome so far it um i've been very lucky and it's been um it's been a, a great a great road so far i can't think of of any 
huge difficulties. I, you know, I've been very lucky. <laughs> so interesting seeing you as a as a kid, as a child, playing flute, uh, violin, and piano. Mm-hmm. Why did the piano win out in the end? Um, well, I think violin was just. It wasn't the instrument that I loved to begin with. Um, I, I really enjoyed playing flute and still do, but uh, the piano held the most interest for me. The repertoire, um, the instrument itself, there was just a lot more potential there. So that was always what I gravitated to. I've sort of been painting the picture of your life mm. you know, uh, from a child to now, and it's not that long, but it's been a while. Where, where do you see yourself now? Do you see yourself really just beginning your career? Uh, I hope so. I hope this is uh, a beginning, and I have no idea where it's all going to end up or where it's going to lead to, but uh, I'm enjoying what's what's happening so far. Where do you want it to go? I'd like to continue um, in, first of all, in core classical. Um, a lot of people have said to me along the way, well, you know, you should really try this or try that, branching out and... You mean like crossover stuff? Crossover, whatever, and or do you play Do you play jazz, do you play uh, rock, whatever. No, it, it's always been, this is what I want to do and, and stay with. Um, and I'd just, I'd like to continue learning, um, never to, to be sort of stagnant or falling back on what I've done in the past to keep on moving forward and having ideals. Do you have any clear goals? Do you have any sort of things written out? Things you'd like to do by a certain age? Definitely not. No? No. Um, I, I prefer to have an open mind about what, what happens and take things as they come and, you know, do do what I can with, with the moment. And some of your great opportunities, making recordings for major labels, playing with great artists, have those sort of appeared like that? Uh, has it just sort of appeared magically? <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but yeah, it actually has. That's uh, what it seems like. Yeah, uh, everything, the things that you've mentioned, they, they were all just surprises and, and um, by chance type of, of things. And that's why I say I, I, I prefer not to say to myself, well, in five years I have to be here and I have to have done this, because you can't predict what's what's going to happen and you set yourself up for never being satisfied with what your life is. You know, if you can, I, I just try to appreciate what what's happening. And but it's been great. And it's been wonderful. Yeah, especially since we keep hearing about how the, the business is so bad. You know, mm. it's so hard That's to right. start. I mean, I I'm older than you. I grew up when you could still have a normal career and you could make lot. If you were good, you could make lots of recordings. Mm-hmm. And and the co- path of making concerts uh, was fairly clear if you had good management. That's not the case anymore, is it? No. Uh, I mean, I'm sure uh, maybe 20, 30 years ago, the idea of a, a crossover artist, it didn't really even exist. It, you know, if you were a classical musician, that was what you did, and I think people just t- took it for granted. And now, people, everyone is looking for new avenues, new branches to to fill up a, a career and make it work, make it fly. Because the normal way doesn't seem to be working uh, anymore. Yeah, it doesn't... Um, Except for you, it does. That, I think you have to do what you believe in, and and just keep after, um, you know, have have your own. Just be in touch with what you need to do, and and follow that. Tell me about your your thoughts on the marketing of Nada Cole. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at your new disc, uh-huh. and and the other one too, the first one on Deutsche Grammophon, the new one on Decca. Uh, you know stunning photographs of you and if you look at the booklet inside certainly uh there's the website which which seems everybody has to have a website now and you're Mm -hmm. actively involved (laughs) you you answer questions from uh uh, you know from people who talk to you what do you think about all do you are you okay with all that part of the music biz um i think as long as people are able to still appreciate the music and and listen to the music that um as you know if if things are always changing and if it's going towards more heavy marketing to get music out to the public then that's that's fine with me um i think you have to be careful not to let other things take priority over the music and and if if something becomes too distracting you know images or um a lot of hype or something then that's that's something i would have a problem with but uh, as long as it's still supporting the main, the main thing, which is the music, then 
it's fine. And you feel it's so good. far it has. I, I feel like it has, yeah, definitely. I was looking on your your website on the the, the bulletin board. Uh, the people who write into it seem to be a lot of men. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know what ages they are. Someone pointed that out to me a couple months ago that there would be maybe one female on there that asked a question. Uh, I guess, yeah. What what can you do? What do you make of that? Um. Well, uh, I guess I guess people look at the picture or whatever, and it's. Uh, because they're attracted to you. I mean, they 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 say, "Oh, you're so beautiful." And this yeah, and that. there were a and couple they, of those. And then they ask kind of lame questions if they have to ask a question, of you, right? <laughs> well, no, there have been some some very serious questions yeah. on there, and some real diehard classical fans as well. But yeah, they have been male, and yeah. <laughs> at least there's an audience, huh? That's yeah. That's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Do you have a preference, recording versus playing a live concert? Not yet. Uh, I'm still recording it. It's still new for me. Before the first one on on um, Deutsche Grammophon, I hadn't ever recorded anything. Um, so I'm still figuring out what I think about it. Um, it's very different, and um, I appreciate you know the uh, the benefits, and and I, I appreciate both for for what what's good about them, what you can do with um, with live performing and also with recording. Uh, so I'm not sure which, which I prefer yet. Because they're so different, right? I mean, recording... And I think the goals are different as well. Yeah. Um, a performance is about the moment and the experience of it, with sharing that with the people in the hall. Um, and it's it's not just about listening. It's also, I think, people come to concerts as much to see things as, as to... Uh, as to listen and but there's it's you know there's an a, an energy in the hall and and everything that's going on the extra noise it's all part of it um the recording is something that you know that you're producing um except when it's a live recording i think you're really making a product that that you want to to hopefully to last um so it's a different yeah, different goals. Well, it's a, and it's a different experience. I mean, there you are in a recording <laughs> right. studio, you know. If it's just you, it's just you and jeans and <laughs> and a couple of people doing technical stuff. Sure. And uh, it's it's a very, yeah, it's a different feeling. And you have the chance to go back and play it again and and try and um, come up with something that, that was an ideal in your imagination. This is how I'd, I'd really like this piece to sound ideally and... You can kind of work with that, and I think that's what's expected of a recording. Do you like playing for an audience? I mean, do you enjoy that energy and that sense yeah. of people being out there? You Definitely. really do. Um, I I find that's that's the best part of of what I do. So, um, in a sense, I would never want to just record um, because that's. I, I always feel like I'm practicing, and and while that's that's a really great thing, um, that. The ultimate is is to be able to go out and play it for people, and um, and I hear in a completely different way on stage than than I ever would at home. Um, even even if I do a run through for friends at home, it's it never comes close to the experience of of performing on stage. How do you learn? What do you you know, as some of these pieces, like the Foray Ballade, which is coming up in the second half of the program, you've played that for quite a while. You've mm -hmm. recorded it. Has it changed over the years? Do you do you learn about a piece as you play it over and over? Do you listen to other recordings? How do you learn about a piece? Um, initially, when I'm learning a piece, um, at some point, I'll I'll usually pick up other recordings. Although I'm not a big uh, I'm not a big music geek. That, you know that that has ever been interested in comparing tons of recordings, whether I'm learning the piece or not. It's just not. I don't know. I, I don't get into it. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I will do a certain amount of that because I feel almost obliged to know what other people have done and are doing with with the music that I'm going to present. Also, very important to me is is reading about what what I've um, what I'm learning. If it's in piece that I'm not totally acquainted with, learning about the composer and what else was going on in that person's life when they were writing the music, um, anything like that, um, talking to people about it, anything. And the actual learning at the piano, um, well, that's, a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> 
You were to play the Foray Ballade, open the second half of this recital from, from the Gould. What's this, what's this piece about for you? I think, uh, uh, speaking of reading about, I think I had read somewhere that there was some, he was imagining a, a sort of forest full of birds and all kinds of uh, natural noises. Rustling leaves, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But to me, actually, I, I don't, I, I know I did one concert that was an outdoor concert where I opened with the Ballad and, and there were birds chirping in the background and various things and it was, it was uh, really fun. But generally, I, I don't have any um, pictorial or associations with, for this piece. I just, it's, um, it's about pure music. Do you have feelings about it? Is there, can you I, I, I find it uh, very optimistic and um, fresh. Uh, kind of piece. That's what I, very often I like to start a, a program, or in this case, um, one half of the program, with the piece because it, it's just such a, yeah, positive, um, warm, youthful kind of feeling, just very fresh. That was pianist Nada Cole, and now here she is to start the second half of this solo recital. 